the multi-day severe weather setup continues across the central and southern U.S. We've got near record warmth, a lot of Gulf moisture, and a very dynamic cold front, and all of those ingredients are going to come together today, tomorrow, and for some, early Saturday. It is Thursday, January 8th, and we've got a lot to talk about. To start off, this is the latest from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, they've still outlined that marginal risk. It goes from Illinois, Indiana, over to most of Missouri, Arkansas, West Tennessee, and Mississippi, even Louisiana. I mean, this is so massive. The lighter green that surrounds it just means thunderstorms, likely not spirit. That's also what we're seeing out into uh, the Arizona, New Mexico area. Really, the focus today is going to be on the western side of the Mid-South. The nice thing about this being the day one outlook is we can also get a closer look into tornado risk, wind, hail, uh, but I mean, I've been saying all week, this is going to be a wind event, not just today, but likely Friday and Saturday too. So this does cover overall, we're talking 20 million people. So Indianapolis, Memphis, uh, St. Louis, Little Rock, Jackson, Mississippi, and this is right on I-65 or Middle Tennessee. So it almost includes Nashville. It does include Clarksville, Paducah. I mean, we're talking about a part of a country. Uh, that has a lot of storm anxiety, so it's really important to go through all this and break this down. Uh, so still, wind is likely the leading event today. I will say the good news is it's a marginal risk, so it's a one out of five. But still, we're talking about that five percenter for wind. Uh, basically just meaning that's the probability of damaging thunderstorm winds, so gusts of 50 knots or higher, within 25 points of wherever, I should say 25 miles, of wherever you drop a point. Uh, on that map. So tornado risk is there. You get that when you have, I mean, just the incredible amount of wind shear. Uh, you can get those really quick spin up tornadoes. That's going to be possible. It's just, it's on the lower end. And hail, we're not even talking about hail. Hail needs a lot of space to be able to do what it wants to do. And it's just not going to be there. I want to show you day two as well. We're going to go through all the storm prediction center days and then we'll kind of look at the setup. But this is your day two outlook. Uh, this more so highlights Louisiana and Mississippi and a small part of Alabama. It's really close uh, right along the Huntsville area. Still a big wind event. Now we've got the cold front beginning to approach a little further east. It just moves slightly further east every day. Here's a look at that wind event. We're still seeing the 5%. 15% is a little bit bigger. And the, you'll notice the 15% mirrors the slight risk. One and the same. Uh, tornado risk is there. There's a good amount of surface cape, which we'll look at the setup again, uh, but more so the tornado risk is going to be Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. Hail again. It's there. That does stretch into East Texas, but out of the three days of this multi-day event, technically four if you include yesterday, uh, tomorrow is definitely the more impressive day because you've got more energy, you have more instability, and you have more moisture because it's coming right off the Gulf. And here's your final day for you. This is something a bit newer, and this actually does include the Appalachians, the Carolinas, stretches up to Virginia, and it's still a lot of overlap with these days. This still does include portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, days and uh, weeks like this where you just have a multi-day setup. It's really easy to get fatigued if you're in one of those areas where it's like, man, is it going to stop storming anytime soon? Uh, but it's, again, one of those systems that's so dynamic, you really have to stay with it. Some areas with day three, we're talking uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, all the way down to, of course, New Orleans, Louisiana, and then Atlanta. You've got right there in the middle. So that's what you're seeing from the Storm Prediction Center. Again, this is for today, and then we'll go to tomorrow, which is Friday the 9th, and this is Saturday the 10th, just so we're clear. So looking at the setup, I mean, it's really easy to see where our attention is and where our focus is. It's this area of low pressure, a really tight isobars. So all these little lines that you see, uh, when they're really tight together like that, what you're seeing from Cape Girard to Missouri, uh, almost all the way down to Music City, when you get that tightness, it means it's going to be really windy. So the big takeaway for today, and again, why I said this is going to be such a wind event, I mean, look at how tight those isobars get. Even if you go up to Ohio, uh, over to northern Illinois, it's going to be incredibly windy today. So as we play this out, uh, this goes into Thursday night and Friday. So we do start to see those rain chances today. But if you're in Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, the severe risk is lower today. What happens is this begins to ramp up and then we really see it pull up that gulf moisture uh, and those dew points are going to be really high we'll look at that too but this is really the part that we have to watch so this continues to move through this is now overnight friday into saturday and it's relentless especially over and again i'm just taking it back and forth we're looping a little bit uh, friday night into saturday the really heavy rain sets up and while of course the attention is on the severe risk 
where we're going to have to really watch for northern Alabama, Mississippi, northwestern Georgia, and almost all of Tennessee is flooding. Uh, this is going to be a big flood concern. We've seen really bad drought, especially across Tennessee, and now you're introducing just a heavy amount of rain in a really short amount of time. We're going to see flood issues, for sure. What fuels storms is warm, moist air, and dew point It's a great way to look at that. Uh, the closer your dew point is to your temperature, the more moist it is outside. I know that word's terrible, but that is what's happening. So as we continue to go, this is now Friday, that's where we're really seeing that moisture peak. And there's just so much across Louisiana and those Gulf states tomorrow, and that does extend up into Tennessee. So the last thing we're going to look at is surface base CAPE. It's convective available potential energy. All that means is lift, and I've talked about it a lot of times. Strong storms need lift. They need room to move. Uh, that's why in the summertime months you see those really big white puffy clouds. It's all that lift going into play. For a strong severe day, you want somewhere around a thousand joules per kilograms, but if you have enough shear, you have enough other ingredients, then, I mean, it can take off. And even, I mean, Arkansas, I think, makes a really good example, or like, especially right here across Oklahoma, into eastern Oklahoma, and this little part of Texas, almost Texarkana area. That's enough lift when you have all the other ingredients present. And that's why earlier today, uh, we saw a tornado watch, and, you know, depending on when you're watching this, could still see a tornado watch. This cape dies off a little bit overnight. You don't get a lot of cape overnight typically. Not impossible. But then look at where that peaks on Friday. Then we're starting to see those higher levels work into southern half of Missouri, into east Texas, into Louisiana. This is why there's that tornado risk that's a little more higher than the other areas because they have better cape. They have better ingredients, they have better moisture, and that front is really going to just amplify things. So if you are in Louisiana or Mississippi, even east Texas, and again, this can, you know, also be included all the way up to Tennessee, but I'm really saying, especially this area, you need to be weather aware as we head into the end of the work week. So Friday, January 9th, that's going to be your better shot, seeing some really messy weather. The last thing I want to touch on, because I don't want this to fall by, you know, the side of things where you're so focused on tornadoes that you're not realizing the flood risk. There is going to be a really big flood concern all across, again, Tennessee, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, the same areas that I've been picking on. And even with, I know I'm blocking part of it, but you can still see upwards of four inches possible. And that's going to be from Thursday night to Saturday morning, which is not a really big amount of time. You can also get those localized higher events, but I mean, it's not going to take much to fill up those little creeks. Drought's been really bad. Um, all across the area, so just that little bit of rain can be the tipping scale for things. I really hope you found this video helpful, useful, interesting. I love to talk about the weather, and I'm so happy you're here. Uh, if you have any comments, let me know, but that's pretty much just a wide overview of what's going to happen. Again, every single day, it's going to be a wind-driven event, whether that is today, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, but we can't roll up those quick spin-up tornadoes, right? A couple of them could be possible uh, today and especially tomorrow over into the Carolinas by uh, Saturday. It's not a huge concern, but it's something to watch. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, love you later, bye.